Hello, I'm Kyle Bratch from Shopper Motorsports, and today I want to introduce to you a brand new helmet that just hit the marketplace. It's going to be the Climb Cryos Pro with Coroid. Now, the standard Cryos helmet has been out for about three or four years now. This here in front of me is the Cryos Carbon. It retails for $499. The new Cryos Pro with Coroid is going to be $699. Now what could possibly go into an updated version of the Cryos Carbon to make it $200 more expensive? I'm gonna go on a limb and say there's three components that I really think make this helmet worth the $699 price point. The first is gonna be safety, the second is gonna be weight, and the third is gonna be versatility. Now we'll pull the scale out here in just a second and compare it to the Cryos Carbon, but I'm gonna tell you it is significantly lighter. And then we're gonna compare it to the Arai XD4, which is one of the premier dual sport adventure helmets in the marketplace. Before we go dig into those comparisons I just mentioned, let's get this Climb Cryos Carbon off the table and let's dig into this Cryos Pro Coroid box so you can see just what you're getting. So digging into this Climb Cryos Pro helmet, what are we gonna find? First off, we're gonna find a nice climb helmet bag. That's always a bonus. So when you're not wearing your helmet, you can throw it in the bag and make sure that your helmet stays protected and taken care of. So we'll go ahead and set that aside for just a minute. What else do we have in this box? We have the peak visor. It's gonna go on the helmet just like so. Next up, we're gonna have a second face shield and I'll explain that in just a moment. And next up, we're gonna have a pin lock insert. Now let's get the box off the table so we can continue the discussion of this Cryos Pro. Now one might ask why a second clear shield came in the box. Well, that's because the shield that comes on it is a photochromatic transition shield. That's right. This shield right here will change darker, the more sunny it is, and lighter, the darker it gets. That alone is over $100 value. And then we look at adding a pin lock that this helmet comes with. That's another $30 to $50 value depending on the type of shield that you have. With these two pieces alone, we're looking at about $150 value. That almost makes up the difference between the Cryos Carbon and the Cryos Pro. Now the third element that's gonna allow this helmet to obtain that $699 price point is gonna be the material that's in it called Coroid. Coroid is a phenomenal material that was developed in order to increase safety in airplanes. Basically, it has 48% more crushability than a standard piece of polystyrene. That's gonna make this helmet extremely safe as compared to most of the other polystyrene helmets on the market. Now, when polystyrene gets crushed, it starts off at one density, and as your head gets pushed into it, the density gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and that blow becomes stronger and stronger. With Coroid, it's completely different. As you start to impact the choroid, it has a crush rate or a crumple zone. That crumple zone or crush rate stays consistent through the whole stroke until it's completely compressed. So if you hit once and it crumples a quarter of it, and you hit a second time and it crumples to halfway, it's the same amount of force that it takes on that second hit as it did in the first. It does not increase in density as polystyrene does. This Cryos Pro helmet was carved from the Cryos chassis. The Krauss Pro was the first adventure-specific DOT helmet in North America to integrate a substance called Coroid into its construction. The Krauss Pro helmet elevates standards in comfort, performance, and airflow while leaving the traditional compromises behind. This ultimate ADV experience is made possible by high-performance carbon fiber construction, four ride mode versatility, aerodynamic superiority, and unrivaled acoustic and contact comfort. So Coroid is a patented production process where copolymer extrusions and thermal welds come together to give you an inner and outer core. It was developed in the aerospace industry and Coroid consists of thousands of miniature tubes welded together which buckle upon impact to absorb energy and reduce the risk of injury. Coroid is the only material that has been scientifically engineered to significantly improve energy absorption and hence helmet safety. Traditional materials, the polystyrene, came from the packing industry, and that technology is super old. Coroid's tubular structure consists of more than 95% air versus polystyrene, which is formed together into a solid closed cell structure. 
As choroid is a tubular format, it allows ventilation without any sacrifice of protection. Versus polystyrene, which in order to allow ventilation, the helmet designers must remove the energy absorbing polystyrene by drilling holes in it or into carving it out. This allows Coraid's tubular structure to provide more protection and ventilation without compromise. Now let's talk about impact performance. The Coraid's welded tubes buckle in a controlled engineered fashion. Maximum amount of energy is absorbed through this deformation. Compared to polystyrene, which is irregular polystyrene beads that compress, polystyrene quickly solidifies as the compound of beads squeeze together. It is a proven fact that choroid absorbs up to 48% more energy than EPS during an impact. Now let's look at temperature. Choroid's base material is a high quality engineered polymer. It's unaffected by temperatures up to 90 degrees Celsius and unaffected by temperatures as low as minus 50 degrees Celsius. Conversely, polystyrene is a commodity of plastic. In high temperatures, it becomes soft, and in low temperatures, it becomes hard and brittle. Traditionally, an insulating packing material, polystyrene has been used inside helmets since the 1970s. Now, before we dive into the guts of this Cryos Pro helmet, let's bring the original Cryos back up and put them both on the scale to see what that weight difference looks like once we've removed a bunch of the polystyrene and added choroid tubes. Now I had to take a moment to set up the choroid version of this helmet with the peak visor so all of these helmets are matched. They're gonna have the same profile. Now we're gonna start off with the XD4, which has been in the segment for a really long time. This really is the leader in the dual sport adventure helmet segment. This XD4 is one of the most prominent helmets in the space. We're looking at three pounds, eight ounces for the XD4. Now we're gonna shift gears over to the Climb Cryos Carbon. This is gonna be the helmet that has polystyrene and not choroid. We're gonna weigh this helmet in at three pounds, four ounces. Now we're gonna grab the choroid version of the Cryos helmet. We're gonna set this guy on the scale and we're looking at two pounds, 15 ounces. Oh, now we're looking at three pounds. So it looks like it's right there on the cusp of two pounds, 15 ounces, or three pounds. But a helmet that's right there on the cusp of three pounds is a super lightweight helmet in this adventure segment. Now, weight isn't the only thing that choroid technology is gonna do for it. It's also gonna give you more breathability. Those choroid tubes are all going vertical. Hot air rises. So unlike the polystyrene helmet that's only gonna vent if there's a hole drilled through it, the choroid helmet is gonna vent whenever hot air rises. It's gonna allow you to stay a lot cooler than you will in a traditional helmet. Now I've personally experienced that with my Climb F5 choroid dirt bike helmet. That is the coolest helmet I have ever worn on my head. We did a tire test last year at Glamis. It was 117 degrees outside and my head was way cooler than it would have been in any other helmet. I know that for a fact, as everyone else around me not wearing choroid helmets we're very much complaining about the heat. And of course, the most important element is gonna be safety. The choroid tubes have a crumple that absorbs 48% more energy than a standard polystyrene. Now let's take a look at the four different ways that this helmet can be worn. Klein claims that this helmet can be worn as an adventure helmet as it comes out of the box, as a dual sport helmet with the addition of goggles, as an off-road only helmet by removing the face shield, and the fourth would be a pure street helmet once you remove the visor peak. Let's take a quick look at each of those formats before we dig into the inside of the helmet. So this here is the adventure format. You're gonna have a nice peak visor that's adjustable. Go ahead and remove or loosen the screw here. You can have your peak high, you can have your peak low, and there's even a middle of the road adjustment as well. Very nice feature. It's a thumb screw, so it's really easy to actuate in order to move that visor to its various positions. You have a nice transition visor here that's only supposed to be worn in the street mode because the shadows that the peak visor causes do cause the chromatic shield here to be a little bit finicky. Now, when you are running the peak visor, it's recommended that you put in the complementary, plain, clear, non-transition shield. So now we're gonna go ahead and open the adventure shield here in the front, and we're gonna throw a set of goggles into this helmet. Now that is a very nice thing about this helmet is the fact that you can wear goggles with the face shield still installed. Now as you can see, the goggles fit quite nicely inside this helmet. 
Now here on the side, when the face shield comes down, you are gonna have a little bit of crossover here between your strap and that face shield. If I were gonna wear goggles in this helmet, I would probably take the few minutes, remove that face shield from the helmet so I wouldn't have that interference. But just so you know, it is easily done. You can wear goggles with that face shield still installed so that when you do get done doing dirt, you can simply pull the goggles off and you're back to your adventure style format. Now you can just go ahead, put your visor down and hit the road. The next iteration of this helmet is gonna be the off-road format. And that's gonna be simply removing the face shield altogether. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and take these two tabs here on the side and we're gonna twist it down. Once it's twisted down, it just pops right out. We're gonna do that to both sides. And that's gonna allow us to be able to, I usually like to remove the peak at the same time. And the reason I do that is it's a little bit easier to function. We're now gonna open this guy up, pop it off, and now we're gonna replace our peak. Now in the off-road format, you're gonna have a completely open eye port which is gonna easily accept your goggles. Go ahead and pull those down. Obviously the fit's gonna be very similar to that of the dual sport. You're just not gonna have that face shield that's gonna be interfered here on the sides. Now moving to the fourth and final iteration of this helmet, we're gonna go ahead and twist this toolless shield and visor mechanism again. We're gonna set the peak visor aside this time. Now we have these two side plates. These side plates are gonna make up the gap or the difference between the material that you lost when you remove the peak visor. There's gonna be a little tab right here and that's gonna slide right into this indention right here in the helmet. I'm gonna set that in place. We're gonna bring this guy over and lock him into place. All right, and there you have it in full street form. We have a transition shield that easily goes up and down. Now I do like the detents in this helmet. I wish the very bottom one here would be a little bit shorter. That way you could crack this and have some good wind flow without it being so far open. But the rest of the detents are nice and firm throughout the rest of the range of the visor motion. All right, now that the helmet's in the street format and it's easier to turn over and put onto the round donut, let's go ahead and get into this helmet and take a look at the internal pieces. Now I guess to backtrack just a little bit, before we do that, let's take a look at venting. Here in the front, we have a vent that's gonna be open when you push it up and closed when you push it down. I'm not feeling any detents in there. It's just basically a slider. So you could choose how much or how little wind you want coming in through the breath box. Moving down from the chin bar towards the back of the helmet, you're gonna find these whisker vents. These whisker vents are gonna be really nice. They act on the Venturi effect. So as wind passes over the helmet, it's gonna draw air with it out of the helmet. It's a nice feature. Up here on the top of the helmet, we have an open and closable vent right here. Simply take a gloved hand, slide it up or down. Now, of course, that's gonna open channels on either side of the helmet. There's not a way to close one or the other, just one fail swoop, and there you go. Moving around to the back of the helmet, we have exhaust vents both down at the bottom and up here at the top. Now moving to the inside of the helmet, the first thing you're gonna notice is a really neat retention system. It's called a Fidlock. Now, when I first started using the Fidlock system on my F5 Choroid helmet, I thought it was really awkward. Halfway through the day, I got the hang of it and literally you take the chin strap and throw it into place and it locks itself in. I love that feature now and going back to a D-ring is miserable. So what I'm talking about is this little guy right here. This is called a Fidlock. This is a magnetic helmet strap closure. Now when you hear magnetic, you get freaked out a little bit, but it is DOT and ECE rated. There is no way that any amount of pressure can pull this connection apart. So it's not just magnets that clip together. It's a magnetic system that pulls a latch into place. And that's really what does the securing. So with this, you simply pull this red lever or tab, I should say, and it comes right apart. You get it anywhere close to the, you get, man, I love that feature. You get it anywhere close to the latch and it automatically connects. 
No more fussing around with D-rings or snaps or anything like that. Take a look. Open and closed. It's that simple. It's a really neat feature, and once you use it, it's really hard to go back to anything else. Now, looking on the inside of this helmet, it's going to be really tough until we get the internal liner out for you to see exactly what's going on. But the first thing you're going to notice are some nice contoured cheek pads. So the interior of this helmet is extremely squishy and extremely soft. It's a little bit different from a lot of the other helmets that I've recently been wearing. Those have a little bit stiffer cheek pad, so you get a little bit more of a rigid fit, if you will. These cheek pads feel like they can form a little more. Now, I don't know over the long haul how they're gonna break in and if they're gonna break in faster or if they're gonna retain the current shape that they have because they are so forgiving. So we're gonna have to see what that looks like here in the future as we put some miles onto this helmet. Now looking further into the helmet, you're gonna see the helmet liner itself, the comfort liner. You can see that that comfort liner has really large cutouts in it and those cutouts lead to the choroid tubes. That's what's gonna allow this helmet to be extremely cool. Hot air is gonna float up through those tubes and then be pulled out of the helmet via the exhaust vents up on the top. Another unique feature of this helmet is you're gonna find that the cheek pads are held in by Velcro, not by snaps. Okay. And then here at the top, we're gonna to have a couple tabs that go in between the EPS liner and the shell of the helmet. Go ahead and flip this around. The next side open. Okay, we got two cheek pads. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the comfort liner. Now the comfort liner does have two snaps in the very back. And then how do we attach up here in the front? Up here in the front, we're gonna have a tab that goes to the side. And then these two pieces that pop right out. Comfort liner. So moving on to the inside of the helmet, now that we have the liner and the cheek pads removed, you can see that this EPS liner has been cored down to a minimal amount. And that is the base layer before you get to the choroid. That's basically taking up the entire outer portion of this helmet. So these green choroid tubes that you're looking at at the top of this helmet are gonna do three things. It's gonna make the helmet extremely light, it's gonna be the coolest helmet that you've ever worn, and it's gonna be one of the safest helmets as far as impact protection goes. You're gonna notice that there isn't per se a helmet speaker pocket inside the helmet, but you are gonna notice that there is a black pad here on the cheek pad that gives you an indication of where that speaker pocket would be. Now the fact that these cheek pads Velcro in it's gonna be a very easy installation of helmet speakers because those typically have Velcro on them as well and they should just stick right in place. Well, on the topic of comm systems and speaker pockets, let me bring out the Cena 10U. This is made specifically for the Climb Cryos helmet. What you're gonna have here is the battery and all of the guts are gonna go in the neck roll of the helmet. You're gonna have speakers on both sides and then a microphone that's gonna come forward if you don't already have a comm system that you're looking to transfer over to this helmet, which can be done, it's fairly simple, and we'll show you how to do that in a different video, I highly recommend the purchase of the Cena 10U, specifically made for the Cryos. It installs extremely easily, it's almost invisible, and it functions extremely well. Now the only piece we haven't removed from the helmet as of yet is this chin curtain, which is removable as well. It's got three little snaps here that hold it into the chin bar of the helmet. Now, a lot of guys will run with the chin curtain to eliminate noise and to keep dust out of their helmet. But the one thing this makes very difficult is drinking water from your hydration pack. Removal of this chin curtain makes accessing your water bladder hose a lot easier. So it's a compromise. Do you want less wind and less dust into your helmet? Or do you want to be able to access your drinking water hose more efficiently and easily? I don't know. That one's up to you. Now, before we button this helmet back up and do our closing, I wanna show you Klein's proprietary antimicrobial moisture wicking liner. This is a material that Klein has worked with the manufacturer to develop. It's supposed to be extremely moisture wicking and of course, antimicrobial. All these pieces are able to be tossed into the washing machine and then air dried, installed back into the helmet and you will have a like new helmet extremely quickly. 
You'll notice on the inside of these cheek pads, you're gonna see extra small through medium. So this shell size is gonna go extra small through medium. This cheek pad is a 52 millimeter. They make a size larger, they make a size smaller, so you can get the perfect fit inside your helmet by adjusting the cheek pads. Now, let's get this helmet back together. All right, so now we're gonna give you a 360 degree view of what this helmet looks like in the street configuration. As you can see, there's no peak visor. We're just gonna have a nice clear shield there in the front. This is the clear shield. You can also do the transition shield. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this helmet on so you can see what the helmet looks like on a person. Again, this fid lock is super convenient. You simply just pull that red tab. I'm gonna slip into the helmet. Now, as far as the fid lock goes, you literally just set it in place and it locks itself. Now, ultimately, I would tighten this chin strap up so it's in my perfect size, which I haven't done yet, but there's, that's how it works. Now, I'll go ahead and check to see if glasses fit well. Yeah, there's lots and lots of room on the side there above my temples. So, literally, my glasses can be, I mean, they're, they're not touching anything. They're, it's a really good fit. Mm -hmm. Again, I can't stress enough how light this helmet is. It is so light, it's incredible. And that's what I was talking about earlier. This guy right here, that being the first click, this line is now almost in my line of sight where I wished it would be just a little bit. One little click down here would be amazing. Again, Fidlock, how easy is this? Done. So here we have a good 360 degree spin of the Climb Cryos Pro helmet in the adventure format. We've got the clear face shield and the peak visor installed. And I'll go ahead and show you what that helmet looks like as I slip it on. And this is what it looks like in the dual sport format. I still have my face shield installed. It's just in the up position. I got my goggles installed in place. This allows me to have a lot more airflow inside the helmet. I can breathe freely. There's no, I mean, I'm getting massive wind that would be coming into this helmet right now. Uh, my eyes are shielded from the dirt, but maximum ventilation and absolutely no fogging of the visor because I'm wearing goggles. Well, there you have it. That was the detailed breakdown of the new Climb Cryos Pro with Coroid. It was a little bit long-winded, but there was lots of features and details that go into this helmet. Again, you have a helmet that does four different styles of riding, street, off-road, dual sport, and adventure. Out of the box, you're gonna have lots of value as there are things that are included with this helmet that are typically additional purchases with lots of other helmet manufacturers. You've got a street helmet that has a peak visor, or you have an adventure helmet that allows you to use goggles, or you've got a dual sport helmet that allows you to ditch the face shield altogether and just run goggles. If the weather gets cold, rainy, foggy, you have a pin lock visor that then snaps into either the clear shield or the transition shield. This Cryos Pro from Climb has lots of value built into it. I'm excited to be able to get this helmet out on the trails to find out how well it performs in all of the different varieties or segments that Climb proposes that this helmet is good for. I appreciate you tuning in today. If you liked anything or saw anything unique here, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more action like this to come directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be part of the notification squad. Until next time, and as always, take care and ride safe out there.